Hello, welcome to another video from Avenue X looking at Chinese Romland in the past week. Finally, a weekly video that's shot in China. I'm filming this on China Time Friday morning. More things may happen after I film this video, but at least this week we've got more stuff to talk about that's actually about Chinese Romland than just me. So as usual, let's first talk about dramas that have gone live. On July 29th, we have a drama going live on Mango Television, and that is the long-awaited, everybody's anticipating, and we kind of all know it's gonna air soon, second season of Da Song Shao Nian. Zhi, Young Blood 2. Still written by the same scriptwriter, pretty much still the same cast, apart from one character. I've watched 10 episodes at this point. This season so far is not so satisfying as the first one. Visually, they really changed color. Even some lens choices are very questionable. They're very distorted shots. That clearly has some technical problems going on in the first couple of episodes that I noticed and most people do notice. And then overall, the color palette is very, very foggy, low contrast, desaturated. Don't quite understand why they have to do that change. And story-wise, not feeling it that much as the first one. Very underwhelming, honestly speaking. And then moving on today, which is August the 4th as I'm filming. Morning time, China time, half past seven. Yuku jumped out and said, we're gonna airdrop a drama half an hour later. So eight o'clock in the morning on a working day, they dropped a drama. So what drama is that? English title, I am nobody. And when it released this first trailer, people were very divided. Some people think it's interesting. We're gonna go and look at how they do the live action version. And some people get really offended just by the way it looks. Since right now there are already four episodes online, I will do my diligence and try to check it out as soon as possible. This one is led by Peng Yu Chang, Hong Ming Hao, Wang Ying Lu. And it's directed by Xu Hong Yu, who was the director of Crossfire, Chuan Yu Xian, which I still still think is in recent couple of years one of the better contemporary dramas. Then tomorrow, 5th Saturday in China, there should be a drama that going live on multiple satellite television. It is a biography drama of a very famous singer from Taiwan, Teresa. Deng, Deng Lijun. I just don't feel there's any living actress who really can take on this role, but I would be curious to see how Chen Yuanxi does it. And that drama is called 我只在乎你, which is the title of one of her very famous songs, I Only Care About You. I pretty much keep my expectation of this drama at the lowest, so that if it just doesn't, I wouldn't get disappointed. Then a couple of days later, around the mid next week, it hasn't been 100% confirmed, but either on the 9th or the 10th, a drama should go live on CCTV. This is the beginning of probably quite a few things we're gonna see in drama land and also film land, because this year is the 70th anniversary of the Korean War. Films, televisions related to that period of history will be more frequent from now on, probably till end of the year. And this is another television series that is the serious proper military drama about last century's 1950s. Not so different from the previous couple of weeks I talked about the scout hero that's led by Luo Jing and Ma Sichun. This one is called Dong Yu Shi, Winter and Lion, and it's led by Du Chun, Wang Ziqi, Zhang Bo. Because of Wang Ziqi and Zhang Bo, I'll definitely check out this drama. Then let's talk about a couple of other dramas at different stages of production. During this week, we have a drama that has started shooting a very typical period idol fantasy drama called Nian Wu Shuang. Not quite sure about the English title because it really is not on my drama list yet. And it's led by Tang Yan and Liu Xue Yi. And it's an ITE production. So Tang Yan is coming back to fantasy idol drama land again at the age of 40. Among the other group of actresses who kind of got famous and popular along with her in the early 2000s, seemingly in recent years, they are all coming back to idol drama land one after another, including Liu Shishi, including Liu Yifei, and Yang Mi has been around in this genre forever. It just shows like hardly any progress has happened in drama land in the last two decades. And if we have to be you know, honest, it kind of goes backward. <laughs> Then we've got two dramas during this week that have got the license to air. They can go live anytime. One is the short drama on ITE. 
天气异闻录 The Mutations. That's a period drama set in Ming Dynasty, led by Huang Xuan. If you still remember that drama, only twelve episodes. Literally can go live anytime and probably just finish airing in one week. The other drama is a contemporary drama, and it will go on both satellite television CCTV and Tencent. Thirty-eight episodes, medical drama. They've recently just changed the title. Previously, it was a different title. I am sure about that. Now it's called Wen Xing. Literally means asking the heart, but the English official title is the heart, and that's the medical drama led by Zhao Youting, Jing Shijia, Mao Xiaotong. Do you still remember that one? Now this drama is fully done. It's ready. It's passed censorship, and I can't wait to watch it. My mother is a cardiologist, so I can ask her for everything. Whether this drama is doing justice to her profession, but also because it includes these three actors. Fingers crossed, this drama is gonna go live sooner than later. Then we have a quick. Piece of news about a film that has just announced they're gonna go into cinema around China's National Day slot at the very end of September 28th. National Day is from October the first to the seventh, and that is the film that was filmed back in 2019 and hasn't been able to get scheduled and go through censorship, and it was so many rounds of re-editing and whatever. Until now, 2023, it's finally gonna go in cinema, and it is a Zhang Yimou. Yeah, that big guy directed film called *Jian Ru Pan Shi*. English title *Under the Light*. It's a police crime film. Local gangsters, corruption, murder, a lot of blood and gore, and look at the trailer. You can see the color and the texture, the type of movie already. You can sense the vibe. And Zhang Yimou really hasn't done a movie like this previously. And then looking at the cast, you have Lei Jiaying and Zhou Dongyu, also including other veteran people such as Zhang Guoli, Yu Hewei, Chen Daoming. So I kind of have to <laughs> go to the cinema to see this film, and let's hope it's a good movie. Then we have a. Couple of other things regarding drama land that are sad, complicated, weird, and whatever. So the first thing is during this week, the producer of the drama that is right now still ongoing on ITE, the Mystery Lotus Casebook, producer of it, Deng Xiaoping, passed away due to a heart attack. This year, we've already seen two producers of dramas passed away. Both are middle aged. One is the Word of Honor producer lady, and now this guy impermanence in life. But also, this industry is actually very grueling. If you've ever worked. In it, you know, you don't have time off. Your schedule is all over the place. You don't eat regularly. It's hard to get good exercise, and、um, people are under high pressure. Not the best working environment for maintaining good health. You have to be super disciplined to be able to do that while still producing. Stuff in China. The next thing, drama that happened yesterday and the day before in China on internet regarding the second season of Lie Zui Tu Jian, Under the Skin, My Baby. I love that drama, and just by thinking that shit may happen to season two makes me very, very, very sad. So basically, the story creator of the first season and I think two scriptwriters working under him, they all exited. <laughs> This project. This project is still ongoing with the production company.、Uh, I believe the actors are still signed to the project, so they can't necessarily quit. But basically, the original writing team of this project left. Judging by what these scriptwriters have said on social media, it's just a disagreement between the writers. And the investor, the money-giving people who have different ideas about how they want to play with this already successful IP. But then a lot of rumors started to happen about people who have money behind one ad, a romantic line, female lead, and people start to gossip about who that person would be. It's not confirmed. There are a lot of rumors online, so I'm not gonna. You know, talk about them because I don't think any of that is confirmed. But we do know that for Rio is the original writers, who I believe, if you really followed Under the Skin very closely last year when it was airing, you probably have seen some special feature video of interview, long interview of those writers, those ladies. I think these people are no longer on the team. Honestly speaking, if they lose the good writers and then they get some really bad writers in, then the second season is already a failure. They can get back. Tan Jianzi and Jin Shijia, no problem. They can get everybody back, but the essence of a drama is the writing. If the writing craps out, then no people can, you know, actors can actually save it. This is a detective story. This is case-breaking detective story. So it's a harder to write type of story to write well. Think about the. Zheng Yecheng and Qin Yunlai drama. That is also two guys, police, and in many ways, it's almost like Mango's attempt to do their own version of Under the Skin that failed 
because the writing is not good enough. Like no matter what you do on the outside, however you want to set up the CP or whatever, it's just not gonna work if the story itself is not strong enough. And now you don't have the writers who made it possible in the first series. Well, good luck. I'd rather those two characters live in their story space forever as we remember them by the end of season one. It's one of my favorite CPs I've gotten in the last two years. This is when you feel so helpless and you wish that you have more power and money and somehow you can come in and say, I'll drown you people with money and just get it my way. Last thing about Dramaland before I go this week, which is during this week, I think there is an official document that comes out, a policy from an RTA about dramas. They are really, really good going very detailed about drama length now. So for dramas, each episode 45 minutes, you shouldn't be given more time to that. And then cap it at episode 40. So total is about 1800 minutes of a drama. If you want to make dramas longer than that, you have to file it for special permit. Certain topics, certain dramas, for example, adaptation of a big classic, you cannot finish that in 40 episodes. For those very special projects, they will grant you the license to have a longer drama made. But if it's nothing special, you cannot go over 40 episodes. If you are wanting to make it longer, like multiple parts in season, yes, you can do it, but you have to air these two parts more than 12 months apart. So more than a year, not three months. I don't know when it's gonna be effective because for Changxiang's The Lost You Forever, they aired before this policy came out. Maybe like for them, they can still air by the end of this year. But for future dramas, if you shoot 80 episodes drama and you don't have special permit to air it in one go, well, good luck. You have to air one part and then wait for a year to air the next part. By then, even if your first season is super popular, you know, <laughs> the food is completely cold. Let's see how many dramas will tightly adhere to that and whether we're gonna see because of this policy, dramas that gets cut in half and then aired more than a year apart. That would be fun <laughs> to see how the production companies justifies this type of doing. Anyway, that should conclude this week's weekly video from Avenue X. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching.